But God is good. Even though we have the technical challenges, by God's grace, there will be a message that will be shared today. It's always a blessing to be here, but it's not just a blessing because we're here to worship the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the most important blessing. But it's a special day. Because there's going to be three young men who are going to give their life to Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Come on, stand up, young men. By God's grace, we'll be attending, if you can just confirm Trevor, Stephen's church at 3.30, the praise of God. And I want you to give God the thanks for that Trevor ran all the way to his home to bring all this equipment to set this up for us. Can we praise the Lord and give him the thanks? It's lovely to see the faces that we, Andre, lovely to see you've got an addition in your hand. Your wife is smiling. Praise the Lord for good health. Amen. David, Kevin, Anthea, wow. Lovely to see the little surprise this morning from my dear brother Wayne and his family. Blessings. So, let's just have a little hymn. Um, I don't know if you can all see from where you are. We've only got one monitor, unfortunately. Um, so you might want to reassemble your chairs. Uh, to see some of the slides. But we're going to start off with our first hymn. Let's call upon God's angels and power to fill this place. So the first hymn we're going to see is hymn number 394, Far From All Care, Far From All Care. Let us stand as we sing this hymn. If you do have any questions, please feel free to refer to it. But then you can to one screen that is on this place. Hymn number 394. Together in the Sabbath to be awake to hear what 
well, we'd like to lay upon our hearts. We're going to invite Abby and Alicia, my two daughters, Lovely to have a full cake. 
And it's a privilege just being reminded of how good our God is. Amen? Amen? He's so sweet. He's so loving. And if you follow the health message, the benefits are there, beloved. Amen. David, I'm still doing the 60 press-ups in 40 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Until my body can do it no longer. You know, this is a very important part of the Bible. And I pray that each and every one of us what it's saying. Oftentimes when we look at the Bible, we see it as a historical event. But what we need to do is to bring this Bible to be a living testimony in our hearts. So if you do have your Bibles with you, please, can you turn to John chapter 18? And we're going to read from verses 1 to 9. So if you have your Bibles, please follow me. John chapter 18, verses 1 to 9. Okay, most people are here. If you are, please just say amen. 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 The Bible says, When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Sidon, where there was a garden into the which he entered, and his disciples. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place. For Jesus oft times or oftentimes resorted thither or there with his disciples. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, come up thither or there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? And what did they answer, beloved? Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. As soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went where, beloved? And they fell to the ground. Then asked he it, then again, whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore you seek me, let these go their way, that the same might be fulfilled which you spake. Of them which thou gavest me, have I lost how many? Are we holding on to the hands of Jesus Christ today? Are we clinging on to his sin sacrifice on our behalf? 